Next modulator we want to look at is the stepper. So I'll click on this switch here to go to stepper one. And this one, unlike an LFO, which just is a single waveform or blend of waveforms, which cycles continuously to modulate something, or an envelope, which just cycles through once. With the stepper here, you can create your own pattern of steps, which can be used to modulate something. Instead of sticking with the oscillator pitch for this one, let's let's change it to frequency. So what I'll do is, uh, sorry, filter frequency, that is. So let's choose one of these filters. Let's go for a different one this time, like the Acido one. At the moment, the uh, envelope down here is modulating cutoff one. So if I decrease the dial here, so at the moment it's not doing anything. And as you can see, we don't have the destination and uh, amount dial that we do on the other modulators with stepper here. So what I need to do is go to the matrix for this one. And the matrix is where you can assign um, or rather set up all sorts of different modulators, um, which we'll look at shortly, to modulate um, any of the parameters that you like on the synth. Pretty much any parameter could be modulated. And you've got multiple pages of these, and each one has three slots on. So you can make the mappings and modulations as complex as you like. Sticking to slot one, though, on page one here, what I'll do is go for the source first, and that's going to be our stepper, so stepper one. And then the target destination, we're going to have cutoff one. And then as soon as I turn up this slider here, you'll hear we get the stepper modulating the filter cutoff. So you can hear this acid eye filter is really nice and colourful. Okay, let's uh, turn the matrix off, go back to the stepper. You can see what we're getting here is this repeating downward cutoff modulation, which is creating that nice uh, repeated um, filter sweep when I, when I hold down a note, just like we were getting when I was pressing um, repeated notes myself with this envelope modulation. But now we, we get it repeating over and over whilst the note is held down. I can change the speed here uh, using the time dial. So a great one for creating really cool rhythmic effects that are locked to the tempo of your project. I can adjust the curve and the shape of uh, the stepper, any of the steps here. All I have to do is click on a particular step. And then down here in the graphical display, you can adjust the slope of the curve. You can also change the start and end positions by dragging the dots here. Moving on to the next step, maybe for this one I'll reverse it. Maybe for this one I'll have it stay open, which I can do by just dragging up this dot. For the next one, I could set it to a square wave using this H switch here to have it stay open a little bit longer. And then obviously change the width of this by dragging the center there, as you can see. Some other tips for using the stepper. First up, you've got some really useful switches down the side here for 
duplicating the uh, time division of each step. So for example, at the moment it's set to a factor of one. So what we can actually do is we can uh, multiply this curve across this step by setting it to two. Or even three. So yeah, it makes it even easier to create very complex waveforms. Another thing you can do is uh, command click on the start or the end of these uh, these uh, positions on each step. So if I command click the start here, what it'll do is it'll automatically jump to the end of the previous step. And command clicking the end here will make it jump to the same as the starting position of the next step. We can also use these uh, copy and paste switches up here as well as the reverse and the square switches that we saw down here. So if we want to copy a particular shape, we just click copy, click on a later step, and then click paste. To change the range of the pattern you've got going on here, you can just change the uh, start and end values there. So maybe we just want to loop this first part. Or maybe just have it going through once by turning loop off. You can hear it sticks at the end of this particular step. So this is like a sustain value, if you like, at the end of our stepper sequence. And then lastly, we have different modes here, although generally I tend to keep it on synced, but uh, this is uh, syncing and also position locking according to your, uh, your uh, project timeline. Uh, to make sure it stays locked. You can free up the position and just have it uh, synced timing-wise um, and also set it to free, so it's just free running if you like. Um, and note that uh, you won't really hear the effect of any of these necessarily if you have it set to re-trigger. So if I turn re-trigger off, then what happens then is it keeps running there. So when I play a note, it doesn't re-trigger at the beginning, but will stay locked to my uh, project and will just uh, pick up wherever it currently is in the stepper in the stepper uh, envelope here. So turning re-trigger back on, now we can get it re-triggering every time I play a note once again. <laughs> 